Uh, let's see how they treat black folk in the Middle East, man. Hmm. I want to see how they treating. I want to see how they treat moon crickets in the Middle East, man. It is crude. It is offensive. And it's ugly. In the Arab world, racist depictions of black people are rampant. <laughs> and the use of blackface is rife. Black people are routinely cast into subservience, playing servants, prostitutes, or they're shown as straight up objects of ridicule. When we watch TV shows or movies, black people are always inferior. And blackface is an inferior, negative, and racist concept, which should not belong in the Arab world. We almost never speak about this segment of Arab society black people. Firstly, because they never get to speak in public spaces. The black person is a citizen in the Arab world, but an invisible citizen. Why? Because power made him invisible. See, white people, the sad man had it right all along. Press one. That sad man had it right all along. Sad man don't have these problems, man. Sad man don't have these problems you gliders having over here, man, in America, man. Salute to Doug G, man. He says, it was the Reconquista in Spain. Yeah, man. You glad it's going to need a new Reconquista, man. <laughs> and then after the Reconquista, you're going to need a Sandman Easter. You're going to have to start treating people like the Sandman treat them. The sad man don't put up with this shit in this country, man. The sad man does not put up with that shit in this country. Okay? The sad man don't put up with that shit in this country. You son words, if you come over here, you better act right. You better know how to fucking act before you fucking get come over here. And when you come over here, you're not to be even speak in public spaces. In public spaces, you don't speak. to school they are being discriminated against they are seen less than because of the color of their skin because they're not arabs because they are not white just because of that reason they are not seen as fit for the arab world so the yemen people discriminate against them in sana members of the minority group known as muham shen literally means the marginalized live in dismal conditions in densely populated slums they count among the poorest of the poor in the Arab world's most impoverished country by more than five years of conflict. In the narrow streets of a shanty town in southern Sana, lined with makeshift tents and cardboard homes, along with a few simple brick structures, women cook outside on stoves fueled with scraps of rubbish. Hassan told AFP, quote, it's as if we are not part of Yemeni society, even though we hold Yemeni identification papers. Our children in school are treated differently, and we are looked at sideways on the streets and in markets. <sighs> Shout out to the Sam man. Sam man had it right all along, man. 
Shout out to the sand, man. Listen, man, you just gotta, sometimes you gotta, you, you know, you just gotta give credit where credit's due, man. Let's see who this sister who would be a slave, who would be marginalized in the Middle East, man, or either be a slave, be walking around in 100 degree weather with a goddamn sheet over her head. Let's see what she got to say in this country that gives her everything. Let's see what she's got to say to the people who created the country that's given her everything, who's given her the greatest quality of life, who's allowed her to live a quality of life better than not only 99% of black people, but this sister is a black woman in the United States. I contend with all of the programs and all of the um, allocations and all of the woke politics and all of the um, wit, TANF, um, Section 8, affirmative action, loans for black women. Uh, what's that um, big company, that big chain that did that thing for black women? Um, but God, you know, whatever. But a lot of a lot of stuff. I contend that the black woman in America lives a better quality of life than ninety five percent of people on the planet. Press one. White people do not inherently have empathy. And it's something that I've talked about um, for more than a year. And one of the reasons is because it has not been modeled. If you look at the epigenetic nature of white folks, especially European Americans, white American people, there is this long standing history of violence. And there has been no effort, no intentions, no work for white people to unpack it. So it doesn't really matter what type of community, it doesn't matter what the effort. White people don't have any practice in doing anything that is anti-oppressive. The things they have practiced doing together is violence, right? Is coming together to do what? Overthrow the government. Coming together to do what? Perform a lynching. Coming together to what? perform violence, win a war, you know, play a game, do a thing, right, to others. What has to happen first and foremost before there's any movement for white folks around change, around justice, around progress, is they have to first unpack that inherent violence that sits in them. Now, they cannot do that, right, unless they're under some sort of leadership, coaching, and mentorship of people who are more my marginalized than they are. So what happens in these other spaces where you may have neurodivergent folks or queer folks or, you know, wh whatever, right, there are all these other marginalized identities that people fail to realize that unless you are Black, those other marginalized identities um, do not outweigh the uh, marginalization of Black people. And when Black people are queer or neurodivergent or, you know, older or in a fat body or anything else, right, the marginalization is greater than anybody that's white. Now, I just want to, I want to, I want to unpack this, man. And guys, I want you to, I want you to, um, I want to ask you a question. Let me let me let me just play. Well, listen to this. I'm going to ask you guys a question. 
white people do not inherently have empathy. And it's something that I've talked about um, for more than a year. And one of the reasons is because it has not been modeled. If you look at the epigenetic nature of white She's talking about epigenetics, which is a theory that your genetics have a memory. Aside from like DNA, they have a memory. So if something bad happened to you, it's passed, the trauma's passed down to you. It's a quacky, goofy ass fucking theory, right? Who thinks, press one if you think there will be a word in any African language for epigenetics. She's sitting in a fucking hut in fucking on a savannah in fucking Africa, pounding yams and getting fucking punched in the face by her husband and chasing around a brood of kids. Who thinks that she that she would be there would be a word in her African language for epigenetics? White folks, especially European Americans, white American people, there is this long standing history of violence. And there has been no effort, no intentions, no work for white people to unpack it. So unpacking. Unpacking. The theory of unpacking something. Who thinks that her African tribe or culture had she never been fucking brought over here during slavery? Who thinks she would have a fucking term in her tribe for unpacking trauma and shit? So it doesn't really matter what type of community it doesn't matter what the effort white people don't have any practice in doing anything that is anti-oppressive the things they have practiced doing together is violence right is coming together to do what overthrow the government coming together to do what perform a lynching coming together to what perform violence win a war you know play a game do a thing right to others what has to happen first and foremost before there's any movement for white folks around change, around justice, around progress, is they have to first unpack that inherent violence that sits in them. Now, they cannot do that, right, unless they're under some sort of leadership, coaching, and mentorship of people who are more my marginalized than they are. So what White people can't do anything unless they're under coaching or membership of people more marginalized. Than they are. Progress is they have to first unpack that inherent violence that sits in them. Now, they cannot do that, right, unless they're under some sort of leadership, coaching, and mentorship of people who are more my marginalized than they are. So what happens in these other spaces where you may have neurodivergent folks or queer folks or, you know, whatever. What do you think the, the quality of life for a neurodivergent person or queer folk would be like in an African village? What do you guys think the daily... life of a neurodivergent person, a queer person in a savannah, in an African village on the savannah would be like, man. <laughs>